Pacoima in the San Fernando Valley, it was a very significant black suburban enclave. That's where if you were African American, you could buy a home in the 1950s. You weren't even allowed to buy a home anywhere else in the San Fernando Valley because of racial covenants and redlining. It was fun. There was a lot of space, you know, you had horseback riding, you had swimming, you had mountain climbing, you had a lot of things to do. A lot of it was farmland, a lot of it was industrialized areas, and so African American communities thought, this is where we're going to go. There were a lot of factories located in the Northeast San Fernando Valley. And so there was a plethora of good middle class, blue collar jobs where folks could make a good living, afford a home, make their mortgage payments. But in the 1980s, we started to see many of those factories close. And that really decimated the black community in Bacoima. And we saw a lot of families lose homes that they might have owned for 20, 30 years. Now you have these people who are direct products of what has been going on, especially in Los Angeles County, for the past 40 to 50 years, with the lack of economical growth, with the lack of being able to have proprietorship within the community. I think that what we're seeing today are, you know, the repercussions of, of racism. The Paxton and Bradley encampment, it is an encampment of families. The majority of the population in the encampment are in some way or another relative to each other. They were homeless with their children. They were homeless with someone that they had lived with for the past 45 years in a home growing up as siblings and now mom and dad is gone and we're on the streets together. We related because we knew each other for such a long time. A lot of us grew around that area all our lives, you know, so we know each other. I was there for like eight months. I did everything to be comfortable. It was hard. You got veterans, you got people who got kids, you got domestic violence situations, you got people like me that were just let out. So you got a, a, a melting pot of different type of situations. Mental health is seen to be right there on the top. I got into some trouble, which led me to be incarcerated, spend a little time. Then after incarceration, I was back led into the society with no real where to go. So end up being at Bradley and Paxton because it was an area where people that I grew up with that were there. So you haven't had stable housing since you've been 18? No, I haven't. It's been a long time. When you are homeless, you're constantly thrown into these situations that are dangerous. My son has severe schizophrenia. Because of that, we have a very hard time finding a place. We have been literally kicked out of places and banned from hotels. I started having depression, and once that happened, you just give up, you lose your confidence. One thing led to another, and before I knew it, I was out here. Worldwide this morning, growing concern over a growing health crisis. Centers for Disease Control says the coronavirus is going to spread in the United States. We direct a statewide order for people to stay at home. That directive goes into force and effect this evening. All the traffic died. Everything just went away. It was eerie under that bridge because it was quiet. The places that they went to use showers and things like that were no longer there and open. They're telling us social distancing because of COVID-19. People are dying from this. So that caused a lot of anxiety because where are we going to go? You're talking about an encampment where you had a lot of older folks. So we had a number of people who were very vulnerable because of their age. 
we needed to get them inside. And we had to find opportunities where we could get people into individual rooms, which led to Project Room Key, the very significant effort to lease hotels. The state wanted to provide indoor space for vulnerable people on the streets who are especially vulnerable to COVID-19. So they took all these empty hotel rooms and started leasing them. If you're 65, it's a no-brainer. We're right. like, yep. Oh. We are now trying to, in a day, get all these people on this large charter bus and take them to the hotel. So then just take all your stuff and put it in here, okay? The trade-off is your own bathroom, a door that locks, and a place that you can sleep. The day of the movie was really scary. We just like, dang, okay, we're gonna take a chance. Make sure if we go there, you're not gonna just throw us back in the street. I want to get on the bus because I want to get out of there. I want to be able to take a shower, a bath, and be comfortable and sit down and relax, just like you're at home. For once, people admitted to the world that homelessness can be addressed a lot faster than how we've been addressing it. We put 40-something odd people on a charter bus in a day. All the years I've been working in homeless services, it's never happened. Thank you. It just felt so, so good and so much safer. It just felt good to be able to close your eyes and go to sleep and to be in the bed, you know. And I remember that I took very long showers. I have my room and I have a restroom, I have a bath, I have all the amenities. I'm able to breathe a lot better. I'm able to do some things like a human being and take care of some things like a human being. Everyone is wondering what's going to happen here, what's going on with the timeline. I would not anticipate any more than eight weeks here, which gives us some time and not a lot of time. So we need to figure out housing plans really quick. As much as we would like to, this can't be your permanent housing. At any given moment, we may have to knock on your door and say, OK, for the next week, we need you to start packing up because it's time to go. If we, as a group, for the next eight weeks can all just have a singular focus of getting into housing, mm -hmm. I do believe that this is possible. Do you have any evictions on your record? No, never. OK. But another problem is they want to see a rental history, and they are more concerned about where you lived before. That's really important to a lot of the landlords. But, I mean, you have a rental history here now, so you can also put this oh, address. Okay. I never thought of that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have you go on Craigslist and whatever sites and just start searching and calling and trying to organize viewings for any time by this Friday, OK? OK. I'm going to find a place. I know I'm, I am. I have to. I have to. Yep. I just don't want to be in this cycle anymore. <laughs> I just want my home again. That's all. So I can be there and take care of my grandkids and live the rest of my life because I'm 54 years old. And my life has not been so good. I'm going to make it this time. And I want to go back to school. I want to do a lot of things, you know, so and just live life, you know, like normal people. The majority of these people know what home can be. It's just been taken away from them so damn much, they don't know if they'll ever get there again. We don't have to use every table, right? It's gonna be very kind of concentrated on whoever walks up is gonna get a lot versus a lot of people coming in and getting a little bit. We'll see how many people are going to show up. Like, I wrote them handwritten notes this morning under their door being like, either please come to this or like, I expect you to come to this. <laughs> At this point, I want to reunify with my family. I got three kids. I got two boys and a girl. And the little girl I see 
like three times during the month. I just love being connected with my daughter, you know. Me and my daughter's been so apart from a lot of areas, and I just want to make sure that she has her dad in her life. This is our website. They have properties throughout the valley. OK, here's, OK. Here's one. Oh, oh, that would be cool. This is a house. house. Oh. This one does accept your voucher. Perfect. This is really good. Perfect. Uh, OK. Have you a room for yourself. Oh, my god, that would be so good. All right. OK, Hopeful. thank this you, This is just, you know, this is okay. today. This, I mean, you have to go. This is two spot things that are up here and I know are available right now. OK, so, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate so you. Going. For okay. real, yeah, thank we, you. Once I get a house, well, an apartment, baby girl, I'm trying to get it where you have your own room. Then we'll decorate it the way you want it. I know that'll be your own space, your own sanctuary. I got a chance to see a few apartments. Oh, yeah, this is really cute. I like this one even better. This is the beginning of me being able to get back on track and to make a lot of major, major changes. There are a lot of people that I sat next to and I hung with that are dead right now. So I do know it's real, that the street is no joke. I don't ever want to be there again. If we treat homelessness like a pandemic, if we treat homelessness like people's lives are depending on it, we could fix things, right? That's the hope.